Is that right with any questions? So we were exploring the relationship between the big four quantities, position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. And we've talked sort of conceptually about them and then the plus minus zero, and then we came up with the four formulas. So we have the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And final speed squared is equal to the initial speed squared plus two times the acceleration times the displacement. Uh, X, S, whatever, I'm in an S mood today. And then the two displacement formulas, <coughs> VI plus VF over two times time. And then displacement is equal to VIT plus one half AT squared. We also have a relationship to the fact that the slope of velocity, make way that better. Slope of velocity versus time <coughs> is acceleration. And that stems from the fact that acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. So if I have a velocity time graph, that's just rise over run. And slope of position versus time. Well, if I did rise over run, if I have my displacement versus time graph, my rise is the change in displacement, my run is the change in time, and so my slope is the change in position over the change in time, or displacement over time, which is just velocity. So if I have a velocity time graph that looks like that, we have an object that's, tra that's traveling in the positive direction and getting faster. This would be my initial velocity. This would be my final velocity. And that would be time. I know that the slope is acceleration. If I plotted, if I plotted this line right here, put it into slope intercept form, y equals slope x plus b form. Well, my y-axis is velocity. My x-axis is time. What is b? In math class, what's B? Okay, so in this case, where does the line cross the vertical axis? Yes, V initial, that's why I marked it VI. And what is the slope of my velocity time graph? Acceleration. Yeah, written right there. So if I just have the plot of the line there and I plugged into, you know, just found the equation of the line, I get this equation right here, which is just that equation right there. It's the same equation. They all stem from the same place, but. So now let's take a look at the area underneath. Let's find the, this area. I basically have a trapezoid. I'm going to break it up into a rectangle and a triangle because just 
way my head's working right now. So I got my rectangle here, and I got my triangle. So my area would be the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle. And what's the area of a rectangle? I guess people are still catching up on writing. So we'll take a dramatic pause when people catch up and then I will ask it again. What's the area of a rectangle? That sounds good. Yes. <clears throat> In our particular case here, what's the length? T times. What's the width? <clears throat> yep. So that's the area of my rectangle right there. And what's the formula for the area of a triangle? squared, right? Nope. No. Triangle. Yes. Pi generally shows up in circles. Half the height times it? Yeah. Because <clears throat> a triangle is just half of a rectangle. So it's one half base times height. Well, my base here is <clears throat> time. And my height? Uh, v final minus v addition. That's a T there. Well, more like a T. <clears throat> and V final minus V initial is just my change in velocity. In other words, if I subtracted V initial from both sides here, I'd end up with V final minus V initial is just equal to acceleration times time. So therefore, this right here is just acceleration times time. So this becomes VI T plus one half a t times t, which is a d squared. And what does that equal besides the area? Anyone? Don't be shy. There's at least one of you looking at the answer. It is. It is indeed displacement. And I'm using S over there. So the area under, I put under in quotation marks and I'll explain why in just a second. Under velocity versus time is displacement. It's not position, it is, it is the change involved there. And then the area under acceleration 
first time is or equals this one up here in a math or English mood a change in velocity. So if you know the initial velocity, you can figure out the final velocity if you've got that. So if I had a graph of, if acceleration is constant, actually, if acceleration is constant, what would this graph look like? It's a straight line. Too. That's a straight line too. Line straight. Just horizontal? Or, yeah, horizontal. All right. So there's my acceleration versus time graph. The area underneath would just be acceleration, whatever my acceleration is, times time, which is my change in velocity. But this holds true even if it's not constant acceleration. These rules right here are true regardless of acceleration constant or not. Just that if acceleration is constant, we can sort of work backwards and derive this. And they, they go hand in hand. If you've had calculus, we're talking about doing it. This is an integral or an antiderivative. All right, so questions to hear? that up. All right, so let's take a look at why I put under in quotation marks. So that's velocity versus time. Yeah, we'll take a look at credit. Is acceleration constant in this for this thing I'm describing? No. Why not? Because it's not horizontal and it crosses the x-axis. Uh, but it's velocity versus time. If our acceleration versus time, then absolutely. But this is velocity versus time. How do you know if acceleration is constant? If I give you velocity versus time. Would it just not? It just wouldn't move, or? Um, I'm not sure. Positive? Not necessarily. How would you find acceleration from a velocity versus time graph? The slope. Yeah. So if acceleration, right here, slope of velocity versus time is acceleration. So if acceleration is constant, what would you expect to see in my velo in your velocity time graph? No slope. Uh, not no slope. Positive slope. Not necessarily. Horizontal. Not necessarily. Constant acceleration would give you. Would it be a linear slope? What do you mean by linear slope? Um, trying to figure out the right way to word it. But... Is that a linear slope to you? Yeah, but is it kind of like a straightish line? Okay. Uh, the word I think you're looking for is constant slope. Got one, yeah. If acceleration is constant, my slope better be constant. There's an equal sign there, which means that they're equal. So constant acceleration, constant slope. And then constant slope just means I've, when I draw my velocity time graph, it is a line, a straight line, which is, I think, what Ian was going for. Yeah. So it is constant acceleration. Uh, let's use some numbers here. So let's make this uh, five seconds, and let's make this 15 seconds there. Let's make our initial seven meters per second and our final negative 10 meters per second. So let's 
pull some stuff out of this. We can do it from the graph, and then we'll do it from the equations. So first off, what is the slope? Uh, actually, before we continue, uh, I think I messed up here. I gave too much information. All right, so what's the slope? How would you find the slope of this line? I'm still trying to figure out if this is shyness or you don't know how to find the slope of the line. And I guess if you're shy, you're not going to speak up right now and tell me which one it is. I don't know how. Okay. Thank you for, for saying that. All right. Slope. Rise over run. You take two points on the line. It shouldn't matter. If it's, if it's a straight line, it doesn't matter which two points you take. Take two points on the line. So if I took that point and that point. The rise is the vertical, whatever that distance is, and the run is that. So it's that divided by that. If you went down instead of over, same thing. That's still my rise, that's still my run. So let's take two points on this that we know. Seven over five. Close. Uh, we know this point and this point. What is my rise? Seven, seven. Close. Units, oh, I wasn't going for units yet, but <laughs> uh, yes, that I appreciate that. Uh, no, there's one other thing I was forgotten. Uh, no, that is the problem because that's what I heard. Seven. Therefore. Negative, negative, negative. negative seven. Because rise, you think going up, but as we go from left to right, we're going down. So that's negative seven. And the run is five. So that is meters per second. Thank you, Brandon. So my slope of this graph is negative seven meters per second divided by five seconds. Now, this is not a complete answer, even though we're doing a division problem here. It's not officially an improper fraction because we've got those pesky units there. If you want to put negative seven fifths, that's fine, but the units need to be separate. And so let's talk about the units there. So I have meters per second, per second. Uh, the, the number part is, that's, that's what I like fraction or uh, decimal form. But what are the final units? Meters. Are you stopping there? Uh -huh. <laughs> Anyone want to pick up where he left off? Meters per second squared. There we go. <laughs> so it's so if we think about that right there, this is meters per second over seconds, which is a meter per second. It's getting worse and worse. Is that right? Uh, meters per second divided by seconds, which is a meter per second times one over seconds, which is a meter over seconds squared multiply fractions, just multiply straight across. So it is indeed meters per second squared. If we did not get meters per second squared for the slope, because the slope is acceleration, if we did not get meters per second squared, there's something terribly wrong. Now I asked for the slope of this, that's the same as asking what is the acceleration of this object? And we could have found that using the cake formulas. So I have my displacement, my initial velocity, my final velocity, acceleration, and time. These are the four major motion quantities. If I know three of them, 
I can find the other two. So what do we want to do is looking for the first five seconds of this problem, what do we know? Do we know the displacement for the first five seconds? We can calculate it, but is it given? All right, got one person. We got two people who suddenly shaking their heads. No, I'll go with that. Do I know my initial velocity for the first five seconds? I got a nod. Yes. What is it? Zero. Seven. Sorry. It is seven. Seven. That's what time is zero. I'm at seven. Yeah. Yeah. Did I write zero there? Just no. emphasize. <laughs> so that's seven meters per second. Do we know the final velocity at the five second mark? What is it? Zero. Yeah, there's your zero. We don't know acceleration, that's what we're trying to find. And time, what is the time? Five seconds. Yep. Hey, I know three things here. Therefore, I should be able to figure out the other two. So, I look at my equations over there. If I'm trying to find acceleration, and I don't know displacement, so I don't know what displacement is, I'm not trying to find it yet, I'm gonna pick the equation that doesn't have displacement in it. And of the four over there, which one doesn't have displacement in it? Oh. Yep, so I can just plug straight into the top one, I get zero is equal to seven plus a times five, that's the math problem. So VF equals VI plus AT. So I'm just plugging in what I know into this formula. And so now I have a math problem of zero is equal to seven plus five A. Negative 7 is equal to 5a. a equals negative 7 fifths, or negative 1.4. And then don't forget the units in the end. I know it's acceleration, so I know it's going to be meters per second squared, because I started out with meters and seconds. Connect it up to some other stuff that we've done. For the first five seconds, am I speeding up or slowing down? Slowing down. Slow down. All right. And notice, for that first five seconds, my velocity is positive because I'm above the zero, and my acceleration is negative. They're opposite signs, I'm slowing down. What is my displacement for the first five seconds? Or how would you find it? Okay. Now that we have acceleration, we could also use the fourth one, but that's fine. If if you're feeling confident with this, go for the fourth one. If you're not feeling confident or you just feel like doing the third one, go for that. <laughs> so we're starting out with my displacement is equal to my average velocity divided by uh, times time. So this becomes seven plus zero divided by two times five. units. Meters per second squared? Or right now? Meters. Yeah, meters. Oh, yeah. 
because my velocity is meters per second. I add them together, it's still meters per second. I divide by just the number two, it's still meters per second. So this is meters per second times five seconds, and the seconds cancel out. I'm left with meters in the end. Alternatively, I could have just found the area here of this triangle. One half base times height, one half times five times seven is 17 and a half. That's 17.5 meters. All right, questions up to here before we tackle that, what's happening at 15 seconds? So now if we look at the entire journey from time is equal to zero seconds to time is equal to 15 seconds, so time is 15 seconds, my initial velocity is still the same, it's still the same initial problem. Uh, my acceleration I know from the first one that we did, that's negative 1.4 meters per second squared. So I'm, ultimately I want to find what is my displacement and what is my final velocity. Uh, let's find displacement first. What is my displacement after 15 seconds? Which formula would you use? Yep. Because the last one doesn't have final velocity in it and we don't know final velocity. So I have displacement is equal to VIT plus one half AT squared. So that is going to be seven times 15 plus one half negative 1.4 times 15 squared. scales there in there somewhere but Because if I said, what's the displacement, and you told me negative 52.5, I would take off three points out of 10. What's wrong? Why would I take off any points for that? Yeah. Units. <clears throat> what are the units? Now let's find final velocity. So this is negative 52.5 meters. Uh, now somebody said that, did we get actually more than one person get the same thing? Yeah, I got the same thing. You got the same thing, okay. How fast are you going at 15 seconds? Which equation would you use? Or which equation would you not use? Pick one.
Define final velocity. Is there an equation that you definitely would not use? Is it number one? Correct. You would not use number one? Why not? Say it again. Let me see. If I want to find final velocity, which equation would you not use? I would use the one with displacement, right? Which displacement one? There's two. You would not use the third one? Yeah, because it means you use the. It's asking you, it's asking you for the same unit or something, so you wouldn't use that one. Sorry, I'm having a lot of difficulty there. So it's asking you to find the final velocity. Right. You can't use that, you don't have that, so you wouldn't use the third one. So you're assuming you also don't have displacement? Yeah. Ah, no, I'm assuming we know the displacement now. Okay. The last one. Why would you not use the last one? Because it doesn't have the final velocity in it. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Now, you might not want to use the first one because for some reason you just don't like that equation. The, 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 my typical excuse is childhood traumas, but emotional scars from my youth. But if you, if I had asked for final velocity first, excuse me, before I inhale saliva, if I asked for final velocity first before we knew the displacement, we would have to use this one. Because that doesn't have, it has final velocity, it doesn't have displacement. Once we found displacement, this is the only one that we really can't use. So whichever one is of preference here, um, let's, let's actually solve it twice, two different ways. I want to solve it using this, and then I want to solve it using this, because there's an extra thing you have to do if you're using this equation. So using the first equation, Vf equals Vi plus At. So that's equal to 7 plus negative 1.4 times 15, which is 7 minus Minus 21. Which is why when I, I, I realized fortunately soon enough that that negative 10 would not work because if that's a straight line, you would not end up at negative 10.